Welcome, everybody, to the Candy Music Den. As always, I'm Brad. And you, sir? I am everyone's friend, Keith. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, everybody's friend, Keith, had this wonderful idea a little bit ago he brought to my attention. Thank and he you. said, hey, I got this idea called the Goldilocks game we could play. What we're going to do is look at historically great or iconic albums. And we're going to decide, after listening to it for a week, is it just right? Is this exactly what it's, it is? Is it underrated because it's better than what people think? Or is it overrated? This album just got too big and, you know, they have it listed way too high. So the first week, what did we do, Keith? London Calling by The Clash. Go back and watch it, guys. We did. So this week was my choice. That's why I'm introing this one. And I said, look, there's an album. I've always seen the album cover. I've always heard of how iconic this album is. And I don't know shit about it. And that's The Velvet Underground with Nico. And you as well weren't too familiar with this album. Correct, sir. Okay. So we'll start right in on this then. First off, do you have the uh, Rolling Stone Top 500 near you at all? Oh, uh, I have it upstairs, but I can tell you, because I read their kind of blurb about it in there too. Mm -hmm. um, in the Rolling Stone Top 500 albums, this is the original one, not the recently revamped one sure. they did. Um, it was number 13, I believe. 13. What album was ahead of it? Uh, like, what was number 12, you mean? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember offhand. I'm sorry. You remember what but... number 14 was? No, I'm sorry. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that someone can tell me I'm right or wrong. But in one of the lists I read, I know it was a Rolling Stone list. Yeah. Sergeant Peppers was right behind it. Oh, you know what? I think you're right. I think it was right behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so what the album we're talking about today is an album that according to Rolling Stone and other people, apparently, is more important and more iconic than Sgt. Pepper's. Uh, yeah, and, and as and, a huge Beatles fan there, Keith. Well, and guess what else uh, they said Velvet Underground and Nico is above? What's that? Thriller. Oh, that's got a... Boy, those are two that's just got to bite your ass right there. <laughs> 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 two of Keith's favorites. Well, you know, well, interesting... Uh, Speaking specifically about the Sgt. Pepper album, um, well, you know, I don't know if we'll, we'll probably never do that one, but I, I think that album is a bit overrated, actually. I agree. But in the Beatles catalog, it is. That's so, <laughs> yeah. So you know. Let's dive into what did you think diving into Nico and uh, Velvet Underground with Lou Reed here? What were your thoughts on this album? Well, my friend. I'm glad you picked this because I w was just so unfamiliar and so curious. Um, and okay. I I've had a bit of a journey with this. So okay, the, fir the first time I listened through the album, I thought this is very interesting. It's kind of, for lack of a better word, cool. Mm -hmm. Um, but I thought about where it's placed on these lists and I'm, I'm just kind of laughing out loud. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm just like, come on, come on. Um, with each subsequent listen, and I've listened to it about four times, I'd say. Okay. At least, um, I enjoyed the album more. Mm -hmm. I began to see the light a little bit more, let's say. Sure. Um, but I'm, I'm really having a tough time coming out and saying anything other than this album is overrated. <laughs> so, well, I'll jump in the mud. So we got an overrated on Keith's side here. Yeah. And as you remember the last time, I dove into the concept of, um, oh boy, the word's going to skip my mind now. Influential. There it is. Influential. Yep. So upon listening to the album, musically, vocally, it's a nice album. It's a, you know, there's great songs on there. I like Femme Fatale. I like the opening track. I mean, it had a good, just some great stuff on there. Yeah. So I thought, as far as the album itself, is this album the top 15, 20, 25 albums ever made? No, not even close. Not in my mind. But I thought, well, let's see. Is this a very influential album? Does this, did this album create great artists to come? No, no, I don't, I don't see that either. I, this is a sound that was already being, I mean, I heard some Bob Dylan here. It sounds to me like they have absorbed most of the influences, in my opinion. Um, 
if you understand what I mean by that. It, it, I hear other bands through them um, or other musicians. It doesn't sound original to where I can go, oh, man, this is groundbreaking. No wonder this would be on a list. Look at all these bands it created and all the, the moves. The people that I know that are enthralled with the Velvet Underground, fans that I've heard speak about them, like Iggy Pop, David Bowie, some of these other guys, their music would still be here without uh, Velvet Underground. Um, I don't see this band being... Would I buy this on vinyl? If I see it on vinyl was a decent price, I like the album. I, I don't see it as iconic as, as it is. No, I would definitely have this as overrated as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot, there's a lot to sink our teeth into with this. Um there was. You know, first of all, um I, I'm gonna push back a little bit on what you just said about the it being influential. Um I I think they they did take from you know other influences and it wasn't mm -hmm. like totally original and groundbreaking like, like a band like let's say like the doors or anything. Sure. Um but for whatever reason, um, there are lots of bands that I think there are lots of bands that would not exist if this band never existed. Really? Um, well, maybe lots is a bit of a stretch. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I cause, yeah, when you brought up the influential thing for our first Goldilocks game, sure. which was Clash, London Calling, um, it really struck me. And I thought, you know what, this is something we're going to have to talk about with every Goldilocks sure. episode forward mm -hmm. because there's like i said you know we talked about this with the clash there's the word best albums there's the word greatest albums yep. um and then there's influential there is which in some ways can be every bit as important if not more important than great yeah yeah um but here's the thing um i think this album gets a hell of a lot of attention because of andy warhol um ding, ding, ding. Yeah, because of the scene in 1967 when this mm -hmm. came out, because, you know, he found this, uh, you know, beautiful German singer named Nico and just kind of threw mm -hmm. her in with them. And, um, you know, it's it's very interesting and very unique in a lot of ways. But what I keep coming back to, um, you know, this actually sparked my interest enough to listen to the other Velvet Underground albums. I don't know if you yeah. did that. Um, a little bit. A little bit okay so i think all their other studio albums and there aren't a lot are far superior to the one with nico <laughs> the little bit i did listen to i thought the same thing so i'm thinking if we're talking about putting this at number 13 <laughs> of all time yeah. rolling stone for example yeah it's not even their best album that's i was in the same thought process yeah and I so felt that, like we read after the fact has done some stuff that's just as good. And you're 100% yeah. right. It's because Andy Warhol's name wasn't attached to it. And it wasn't a cultural phenomenon. Andy Warhol was a chunk of culture back then. Yes. Anything attached to his name was huge. So yes. to me, that's what this was. If there was no Andy Warhol on that album title, I mean, this would just have been another Velvet Underground album that was you know, good, but they're, like you said, their best albums aren't on these lists. So, well, you know, and you know, you know what I thought of this is kind of funny. I, I kind of mean it a bit tongue in cheek, but um, I, with the scene back then and everything, the way I view it, it's like it almost seemed like you know, throwing Nico into the room would be the equivalent to like someone saying there's this great new painter and like they're the the greatest thing since sliced bread, and all of the cool people like him, and you know, they could. They could have this painter walk in and, you know, there's a blank white canvas and they simply put like a little black dot in the center of the <laughs> canvas and everybody's like, oh, that's amazing. That's so yeah. brilliant and, and minimalistic and I'll pay $50,000 for it. Yeah. And it's just like, to me, I'm, I'm overextending, of course, but to me, in some ways, that's what this album is. It's like, oh, you've got Nico and, you know, I mean... There's some really good writing on here. There's some really good songs sure. that I enjoy listening to that I will listen to again. Yeah. But the full album listen, I mean, it's the album is very front loaded. Oh, it um, is. Very front loaded. Um, so you know, yeah, the fact that this is in the top twenty, even top fifty, even top maybe one hundred of all time of all time, uh, to me is just 
overrated with a capital O. I agree one hundred percent. Now yeah. we may get we may get shit in the comments here, um, but I now I'm saying I'm so glad you picked this because if I saw if I saw their third studio album, which is self titled but not with the Nico name on it, so it's the self titled yeah. one. If I saw that on vinyl for a good price, I would scarf that up in a second yeah. um, because I really like it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think Lou Reed uh, is he's not really underrated as a songwriter because he is very highly regarded. Yes. Um, but I personally have a new appreciation for Lou Reed. This yes. is another one of those guys for me where when I was younger, I didn't appreciate it as much because I got so hung up on the vocals. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of times where it sounds like he's just talking. Um, sure. But that's a stylistic thing. Um, you know, there was that whole scene, you know, with the beat poetry and everything. Yep. And, you know, I feel like this album is very, with Nico, is very interesting and kind of, you know, it is cool. There's a coolness to it that I can't deny. Um, I'm very happy that I'm familiar with it now when I wasn't before. So I'm very glad you picked it. Um, but to put it in the upper echelon of greatest album, greatest albums of all time, to me, is just a, a big stretch. I, I agree. Yeah, I mean, like you said, top 100, I couldn't even put it in. No. I mean, I just couldn't. Um, and it's no fault to them, because like you said, the Velvet Underground has great albums. It's just not that high up. It's not that new. It's not that innovative. It's not that uh, influential, in my opinion. This is just a good album. Lou Reed's a great writer. But I don't see this as being the 13th best album ever written. You know what I mean? No don't way. See it. Don't see it. I think... I, I think I think it gets touted as being more influential and more groundbreaking than it was, um, like we said, because of Andy Warhol. Yeah. So, yeah, man, I, I just, <laughs> like I said, I mean, I, I'll take all of the other albums that came out after uh, the, the next three. Uh, apparently, there was another one that I didn't explore as much. And it, it on Online, I hear you know, people say, oh, it's just the Velvet Underground in name. So I don't even know what that means. It's kind of yeah. not considered whatever. I, I could be wrong, but that's what I read. But um, but the next three after the Nico debut album um, are, are really good. Um, I, I enjoy listening to them. I'm glad I kind of know this band now where I didn't before, mm -hmm. which kind of, kind of um, I don't want to say embarrassing, but, um, you know, they're, they're so well regarded. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it kind of makes you feel a little better to hear you say what you're saying because yeah. – <laughs> But maybe I, I was missing the boat here. Um, no, in fact, but, you've like you said, you've done a good job on this one of playing devil's advocate the other way, where you've given that a little more credit than I would give it. I think. Yeah. Because to me, this was a no brain brainer. No, where I just didn't see. You said you do see influences. I to me, this felt like like they've been influenced, and I just heard the same things coming out of them. So it's kind of both. I mean, that, which is makes it kind of more interesting in a way. Yeah. <laughs> might sound like a stupid thing to say but uh um now i think part of the reason it's so revered too is that this album just represented that moment in time in 67 and that's what you it know, is like you said it's a cultural phenomenon it's not just music yeah um and that's so, i think we can kind of pitch and hold us directly into is it was the culture it was the time it came out it was who they were associated with that's what has it at number 13 on, on rolling stone it's not the music yeah, and well, what do you think of Nico? What do you think of her vocals? I mean, they're okay. I mean, I, yeah. like you said, I I enjoy the band better without her. I do too. Um, yeah. Like I said, this goes back to my analogy of this, you know, the artist just putting yeah. the black dot in the center of the canvas and, oh, that's brilliant. Um, I think because Warhol found her and threw her in the room with them, everybody was like, oh, what a genius. Um, yeah, no. I know. feel like once they got away from Warhol, they were better. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. man, I, you know, and the musicianship of the of the band members, mm -hmm. um, it's just much better on the on the albums yeah. that followed this one. It is. I don't. I don't. There, I, out of all the things I've listened to, this was my least favorite of the uh, Velvet Underground. Me too. Okay. Yeah. Me too. And again, some some cool songs that I will return to, but again, a very front loaded album. You know, in it my is. Opinion. Well, there um, we go. We have our first fully overrated album. I think last one, the Clash, you had a little bit overrated, and I had Just Right. Yeah, so. and I even by the end of the video, I was coming back down to the Just Right <laughs> camp in a way. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but well, Brad, you know what we're gonna say? It's time for the the folks to weigh in here. Yeah, um, let's know. You know, I kind of this one. Yeah, I, I kind of welcome some scathing comments from uh, Velvet we, Underground fans. We might, we might get some. <laughs> but who knows? You know, maybe there's big Lou Reed and Velvet Underground fans that agree. Like, I take the Nico crap away, and I'll take the rest. Huh? Oh yeah. So I'm very interested to see about the comments. Yeah. So please, please don't yeah. let us down, folks. Uh, put some comments in. Um, so, um, I want to pick. Man, I have a list going of um albums we can do for this okay. so if you'll permit me i would like to pick the next one yeah absolutely because i want the folks at home to follow along maybe listen to this in, in uh preparation for the next one Sounds um, good to me. are you familiar with the band called the jam i am but i haven't listened to them much there we go good but i do know the jam i've heard of the jam okay so they have an album called All Mod Cons. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. By the jam. So that will be our next choice for the Goldilocks game, my friend. So uh, put it on your phone, uh, get familiar with it. And uh, I'm very interested to see. I have already listened, started to listen to it, by the way. Oh, um, you got a head start. I got a head start, but I am going to re-listen again because I've been listening to all this other stuff too, especially. Okay. Velvet. So this is considered um, an iconic high rated album. It's considered, yeah, I mean, probably not, maybe not as iconic as the first two we've done, okay. but definitely considered their best. Um, okay. They're definitely considered, um, it's one of those bands, I think, that didn't catch on as much in the States. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, you'll see when you start diving in and maybe looking online and stuff, I mean, this is, this is considered like, wow, you know, a wow album, Okay. You know, which is what we're going for here. So that is what um, we're going for. So folks, we're going to go with the jam. The album is called All Mod Cons. Um, so we'll check that out for the next Goldilocks game. Uh, so please weigh in about Velvet Underground and Nico. What do you think? What do you think of our thoughts? What are your thoughts? Um, and yeah, we would love to know what you think. And if you have ideas for the series of albums we should uh, dive into, we actually had some people already comment and say, you know, Dark Side of the Moon and things like that, which would be interesting. Um, that one is... is uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess we could do it. I almost feel like it's too, it's too widely um, revered that I don't, I don't know. I don't think there's as much mystery necessarily of overrated, underrated, but maybe, maybe there is, you know, we're, we have different, you know, opinions and ears. So um, hell, I'd like to just dive into it. Cause I haven't listened to it in a while. Um, <laughs> but so yeah, uh, in the comments, uh, let us know what you think, but also suggest other albums we could do for the Goldilocks game. We hope you like the series. We're having a blast with it. Um, so for Brad, as always, uh, I am your friend, Keith, <laughs> and this is the KMB Music Den. Please like this video, share it on social media, smash the bell for notifications. You'll be notified every time we drop new content. And subscribe to the channel. Brad, we are creeping up on 400 subscribers here. It's coming up. 38,000 views, 400 subscribers. Not too shabby. A little, a little bit of something going on. A little something going on here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we appreciate your support, guys. Uh, spread the word. If you know music lovers and you love the channel, uh, send them a link. You know, we the, the more the yeah. merrier. Let's. Uh, there's no limit to this party. No, uh, uh, what do they call that? Uh, f fire uh, hazard or what do they call that? Oh, occupancy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, the more the merrier. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thanks. Velvet Underground is the topic. Let us know what you think and listen to the jam, all mod cons for next time with the Goldilocks game at the KME Music Den. Thank you and happy holidays. We'll talk to you real soon.